This is wild. They got a 6.5 Creedmoor stuck in this box of 308 Winchesters. Wow. There's an object lesson for you, folks. Hello, guys. Ron Spomer here. Out at the shooting bench about to do some uh, research work for a magazine. I have to uh, thoroughly test this rifle. You've probably seen this before. We featured it in our 308 Winchester Week videos. This was my overall winner, the big pick, Wilson Combat Nula Model 20 in uh, 308 Winchester, obviously. So I've got my notes here. I have to take down all the data. And this is the shooting bench. There's a camera we'll be using to get some of this. And here's my little chronograph. This isn't the best chronograph in the world, but I've tested it against some really good ones. And by golly, it comes within a foot or two feet per second of the same consistent velocities. So I'm gonna take velocity readings, shoot five shot groups. We've got some ammo here that was provided by the manufacturer of the rifle. They gave us some actual Wilson combat loads. And those are what? 165 grain sear, a boat tail, hollow point boat tail, their game king loads, okay. And then some Lehigh defense. They must like the Lehigh Defense stuff because they sent me some of that. We've got a uh, 2,600 feet per second low recoil load for a 20 inch barrel, 125 grain bullet, pretty light. Then we jump up to 152 grain bullet at 2,800 feet per second. That's kind of standard for a hunting bullet 150. That is what we will be trying. So we're gonna start with the light ones first. I've cleaned the barrel after the testing I did last week with the 308 Winchester week. And uh, I don't know how much of this stuff you guys want to see, but I just thought it would be fun for you to see what is all involved in a program like this. So I'll turn on the other camera and get started, and we'll probably speed things along. I'm not going to show you every shot, but give you a, a feel for it. But it, it takes a lot of time and a lot of work to get this much data. I think I'm going to have to do uh, five or six different loads, five-shot groups, three five-shot groups with each one of them, if I'm not mistaken. That's a lot of shooting. Chronograph is ready. Shoot a couple of fouling rounds here. Get this thing roughly zeroed. I think the last time I shot this, I must have been using my glasses. Because that crosshair is not that sharp. There we go. Much better. Get everything figured out here. Make sure I'm not catching that stud up front. Lock down. Nice and solid. I'll squeeze that rear bag for my elevation. All right, let's see how close we are. There are several holes in that target I'd forgotten. I couldn't see them with that di diopter set wrong, but I'm good now. All right, about an inch low and an inch right. If I remember right, this thing was consistently right. We'll give her an MOA to the left. I have to find myself two more rounds since I used the Fowlers out of my five round magazine. So we're doing about 2650 so far. I think I'll start that over so I get a good, good reading on five shots. Two holes nearly touching. Under an MOA with a three shot group. Let this barrel cool a little bit. Get a little closer to that chronograph so I can see it without my glasses. 2569. Thought I saw a 26 something before. We'll round it all up, figure it out when we're done with that five shot group and then record the data. This is why it takes so long. <laughs> it gets kind of boring. You have to wait for things to cool down, to play fair. And I don't really know what is fair, you know, when you're re working with a rifle like this. Is it fair to shoot three times quickly? Uh, some guys will say, well, you need to cool a barrel between each shot. Well, who hunts like that? Who even target shoots like that? You know, generally you're going to shoot three to five, expect it to shoot to the same place and remain fairly accurate. So, at the same time, I don't want to be getting too hot of a barrel, but I figure if I can still just lay my hand on that barrel 
It doesn't burn my hand or anything. That's not too hot. Sure, it could be a little bit different, but my gosh, if your rifle is so fussy that after three shots it goes to hack, I don't know. Maybe it's not as accurate or as good of a rifle as you'd think. So let's shoot this with a warm barrel here now after a minute or two of cooling down. I think we should be fine. I'm impressed with those first three shots. That one looks like it might have climbed an inch or something. Yeah, the wind is just pretty close to like an eighth of an inch between anything. That looks like it's into the initial cluster. So we've got four inside of a minute of angle and that one went high. Not bad. So what I'll now do is police my brass and then take down my readings off the chronograph. And I might just stroll down there, let this thing cool and look at the target and see if I think I'm getting what I think I'm getting. But I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Just that one went higher and blew my group up to an inch. But boy, for four shots, it's looking pretty nice. Measured up for you. Looks like it's 0.712. Under three quarters of an inch. But boy, once you step up to this guy, it opens right up. Too bad. Yeah, just about inch and a quarter, a little more than that. But still pretty darn good. We'll see what else I can do. Fresh target. Here we go. All right, well, good news. I just uh, checked with my editor, and I only have to shoot three-shot groups with a lot of different ammunition. So after I'm done with these three, I'll get some more out. But I just opened this box of the Lehigh Defense with their copper bullets, and it says something important here that I think we all need to know about copper bullets. I've seen this before with Barnes bullets as well. For optimal accuracy with Lehigh Defense bullets, it's important to clean the bore of, uh, of all non-Lehigh Defense copper fouling prior to shooting Lehigh defense bullets. Copper fouling in the bore that has been deposited by the use of common cup and core bullets will have a substantial negative effect on the accuracy of Lehigh defense solid copper bullets. And by solid copper bullets, they don't mean that it's a FMJ type solid. This is a hollow point, but it's all copper. That's what they mean. So that previous group, good though it was, may have been even better if I had cleaned out the copper fouling. I did not. I cleaned out the carbon fouling from the barrel, but I didn't go after the copper. So keep that in mind when you're working with things like this. It is worth knowing. So three-shot group, pretty nice. We'll see what these 152 grains do. Got the chronograph ready to go. Sun's going away. It's getting cooler out here. Got a fresh target up. I think I will go for the center. Straight up. A couple of inches, it looks like. A little more recoil out of that one than those light loads. I'm holding this rifle quite lightly. I'm going to tighten up a little bit now that I know how much it's recoiling. Uh, it's probably a half inch out and people often complain when they watch me shoot that I'm my hands coming off the rifle the rifles f jumping off the rest and all sorts of things and target shooters with heavy rifles generally do this they squeeze the the bag back here the ears to uh, tweak the hold and then try to let the rifle rest without disturbing it with your hand. So I hold very lightly. But the harder kicking the rifle is, the lighter it is, the more you have to hold on to control it. And at some point, you probably should hold down the forehand. But I don't want to hold my hand over the barrel and change the vibrations on it. So sometimes I will hold the thumb down on one side of a, right here on the ledge of the forehand stock. But that could be affecting accuracy as well. So I'll generally do this one-handed approach to see how well I'm doing. I pulled that one a little bit and it shows. Got about an inch, a little, maybe a little more than an inch group out of that. So in fairness, I think I'll shoot these three more shots with this. I'm obviously now laying down the copper falling from this particular type of copper that Lehigh Defense is using. 
barrel is remarkably cool yet. Pretty cool out here too. That always helps. And a little bit of mist might be starting to fall. Hope I don't get rained out. Now, yeah, while my action is open, I'm gonna check that velocity. Looks like 2700 something. 2750. 2750, that's what the uh, military was claiming for the 308 Winchester in its T-64 trials way back when, in the 19, early 50s, I guess. That's what they wanted to hit. That's what the 30 out 6 with its 150 grain bullet was supposedly averaging during World War II through the Garand. And that's why they wanted to, to get that velocity or close to it with the new, shorter, lighter cartridge. And that was the... 308 Winchester, and two years later, the uh, military adopted it as the 7.62 by 51, and then NATO grabbed it, and they threw NATO behind it. That was in 1957, and that's where we are today. Extremely popular cartridge because of its military connections, and uh, quite effective on game. Kind of a, a middle-of-the-road cartridge that I'm famous for not liking. <laughs> not that I don't like it, it's just that I'll... And better cartridges for all sorts of applications. But boy, if you just have one rifle, one cartridge, you don't want to put up with a 30 out 6 for the long action, as well as the extra recoil, which isn't a heck of a lot, but a little bit, a 308 is a good option. All right, now I am shooting one, two, two to three inches high, and uh, my target out there. It's uh, got some extra red marks on it that are only one, two inches from the very top edge. So I would have to dial down at least an MOA with this one to make this work or go right off the paper. So one, two, three. Yeah, I better just dial down since it's the same load now. Down one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. That should put me three inches down and keep me on the paper. See how well that does. Despite this only being a 9X scope, it's nice and sharp and I'm seeing the target quite well, but I do cover up that little red dot with the center dot on the reticle here. So I'm not as precise as I could be. Yeah, that's an inch, inch and a half low. That's okay, it kept me on the paper. That's right beside it, looking pretty nice. Barrel, just a little bit warm, so even warm my hands on that. Yeah, looks like that one went right under the bull and that opened it up to a good solid inch, maybe an inch and an eighth. Still pretty decent performance, especially for a really lightweight rifle like this shooting copper bullets over the top of a cup and core fouling that they don't recommend. So I'll give this thing time to cool, take down some data. This is the data collection here at the chronograph. I could read each one or go for the averages. So the high was 2754. Lowest velocity was 2715. The average 2737. Extreme spread. 39, not a big deal there with only three shots. And the SD is really useless when you have that few. But there's the data. Rather than go out and check that target, I'll shoot another group because we've got such a clean target. I tried this Wilson combat ammunition. Not sure who loads it for them, if they're doing it right there in the plant, but claims it's a Sierra Game King bullet, but this sure doesn't look like a Sierra Game King bullet to me. It's got kind of a skived nose on it, hollow point, and that just doesn't look like a Sierra Game King to me, but we'll shoot it and ask the manufacturer later what exactly it is. supposed to be a 165 grain bullet and they claim 2650 feet per second out of a 24 inch barrel and this is a, a 20 so I don't think we're going to get that chronograph is ready yeah not a know where this one's going to hit a lot of times those heavier bullets will land higher mmm 
that must be what happened. No, wait a minute. Way down there. Yep, I think it dropped about five inches. That's okay. Keeps me on the paper. 25, 45, I think that thing says for velocity. Can't quite see that far without my glasses. I'm holding pretty firmly now. Oh, it looks like it's maybe three quarters of an inch from the other one. They're right there, but not an outstanding group. Got better the other day when we were doing the show about the 308 Winchesters. All right, we'll let things cool, take down some data, go get some more ammunition, and keep on testing. Well, to be fair, I put on a past recoil pad because I'm beginning to notice a little bit of the recoil here. I don't want to start doing a little inadvertent flinching. And I'm also doubling up my ear protection. I put some foamies in and cap it off with this. That might just help me shoot a little better. Now, I grabbed some more ammo and this is all copper since we had that copper issue. I don't know if it makes a difference if you shoot one brand of copper over another and intermix them. But rather than spend time cleaning this barrel down to bare metal of all the copper, Thought I'd shoot the copper loads. Now this is a Hornaday CSX. I think we've got the 150 grain here from their outfitter line of hunting ammunition. Yes, 150 grain CSX. That's their all new copper bullet. Replaced their GMX, which I have used successfully for various game. We'll see what this does for targets. Lower left. Not catching that bullet hole. I hope it's out there on paper somewhere where I can find it. Yeah, I might have to raise my sights. Try another time with this load. I'm just not finding it. Yeah, better go out and check that. No waste ammunition here. I'll have to go out and check that one. Once again, I'll take my data down, and then I'm gonna run out and check that target. We'll see you guys out there. Well, the, the groups were pretty disappointing for this rifle. It was doing much better with the other loads the other day. So I think that may be uh, the problem here is that copper fouling with these copper bullets now. You know, the gilding metal fouling from traditional bullets. So I think I'm gonna clean this thing out, use some copper solvent on it and just really get it clean, give it a fair shot because it should be shooting better than these inch and a half groups it's getting. So we'll go clean it, come back and uh, jump into this game again. See how much work it is, told ya. Well, okay, I got it squeaky clean. <laughs> Took an hour or more. Copper cleaning is not easy, but looks through the bore scope and we are down to bare metal. So we'll give it a couple fouling shots using this uh, low recoil fodder here from Lehigh Defense. Give it a fair start. Got the chronograph turned on again. Got a lot of holes in that target. So since I've already shot those groups over there, I'll just mess them up because I've got the measurements already. Light's getting kind of low here. About an hour from sunset. I'm not sure where that one landed, but I think it's about where it's supposed to be. Give her one more foul. No, I'm not gonna get chronograph readings now. It's getting too dark. Oh, I hate that. This is the downside to the light trap style. Let's see if there's anything I can do about that. No, doesn't look like it. So I will probably have to break off. There's no sense in testing when I can't get my velocity readings. Although on this ammo, I've already got velocity readings from the first batch. So I guess I could shoot some three shot groups. Yeah. Not seeing where those are hitting, but hardly matters because I was fouling the barrel. 
So as you can tell by now, there's a lot that goes into this accuracy testing, accuracy testing, and you might not want to go through all that trouble, nor may you have to go through all that trouble. One way to think of it is get a load that shoots well in your rifle for your purpose, let's say hunting, and good enough. I mean, if you're a minute of angle for a big game hunt, you could call that more than adequate for 400 yards, even 500 yards. I mean, a five a one MOA rifle should keep everything inside of a five inch group at uh, 500 yards. <laughs> How many of us shoot game at 500 yards? And I understand there's long range shooters out there, but this is for a typical hunter. So you've got a good enough, even a, a 1.5 inch group at 100 yards, you're gonna be good out to 400. But obviously we love to have a, a, just a more precision shooting rifle, but you're gonna be wearing out your barrel as you play around with this stuff. And ammunition costs, of course, are so high, you're gonna be burning up your ammo at the same time. So I just think it behooves us to try to find a, a dependable rifle, something that's got, it's got a little mileage behind it, it's got some guarantees and that sort of thing, and minimize the uh, target shooting or the zeroing and testing for different loads. I mean, when I was younger and reloading and ammunition was inexpensive and everything, I could I could go through <laughs> all kinds of uh, tests on a barrel and a, a rifle and find a perfect load for it. But yeah, just some things you might consider. So obviously I'm doing this for an assignment. We need to find out what this thing is capable of. So we are going to shoot it some more. And now we will shoot for group here. If I can find a nice clean spot on that target. And I'm thinking, let's see, those shots were all a bit high. Nah, looked like those were down there. So I've got to pick a spot. Mm-hmm. And if those are shooting high, that should be where it shoots. But I did dial it down. I'm going to go for the center bullseye and see if we don't strike low. And we did. Wait a bit. I think we can get a group now. Got a little reading on that, looks like, too. Yeah, and those two are a good inch and a half apart, so stripping down that barrel doesn't seem to have fixed anything magically. Yeah, two of them are looking good, but that third one's out. Now it could be that this thing needs three fouling shots before it settles down. <laughs> You could go around and around forever with this stuff. But I think we're going to now try that next group, the next batch of ammo here. We are giving the Lehigh defense its best possible chance here with this nice clean bore. There's no other fouling in it. Oh, that's, that's nice. That is not too hot of a barrel to do some work. Let's see if we can't get a hot sub MOA group out of this stuff. Now in prior testing with more traditional bullets, we were doing some really nice accurate stuff. So we ought to be able to find a load that works well in here. Now I've got to reconsider whereby, okay, those bullets were hitting just a little bit low. I think I'll be all right on that center dot again. That previous group was right at the bottom in the middle. I think I'm right under the bowl. Nine X and failing light though, no guarantees. And I took my readings last time so the chronograph doesn't work, it really doesn't matter. Not shooting particularly well here either, the way it looks. I think we'll walk out there and see what we've got. Hope we got some good accuracy out of this one. There we go, there we go, there we go. Those are my two fouling shots. I was aiming way up there. 
and they dropped that far. And then uh, I dropped down there with those light loads, those low recoil loads, and they would have been really nice if not for that flyer. Uh, was that because I only had two falling shots down the barrel at first? I don't know, but the next load sure proved itself. 0.815 of an inch. So that's sub MOA, three shots, bingo. So maybe the copper falling made that big difference. To really find out, I think I'd want to shoot another three-shot group and even maybe one more. But as I had mentioned earlier, I don't need to shoot a barrel out. don't need to waste ammunition. Uh, maybe down the road, I would, if I were serious about hunting with that, I would definitely work some more. But for my testing right now, I think we can call that one pretty good. And we'll work with some new stuff. All right, I think we got a nice group there with that last load with the Lehigh Defense. That was at 152 grain, I believe. Uh, 152 grain CC. I'm not sure what CC stands for. I'll check that out, but nice. So maybe the cleaning of the, the old gilding metal jacket bullet stuff out of there did the trick. Let's see what happens now if we shoot some more all copper bullets. This will be, again, we'll try that Hornady CX. I've got the velocities on that from the previous one, so I think I can afford to try without the good light. We might get some readings yet. Got a reading there. Can't quite tell what it is. We got something. Oops, I've already got loads in there. I'm so used to shooting one at a time on these bench jobs. So remember the last time we shot quite a bit low. That's what I'm prepared for this time. Looks like the chronograph is still working. Yeah. I think I've got a group out there I can figure out. Doesn't look real good though. Like an inch and a half maybe. So this is how the testing goes. I'll have to come back tomorrow and uh, I'm gonna do a lot more ammo here. We've got some copper from Winchester and we've got some more Hornady. This is another copper load, but 165 grain, I think. Yep, 165. And then I wanna try some more cup and cores and really work this thing over and see what it likes the best. So we'll see you again tomorrow when we get back to work out here. All right, guys, back for another day and more testing of the 308. Now, yesterday I left it shooting rather poorly with some Hornady 150 grain CSX or CX bullets, copper. And again, I've got an all copper bullet here. This one, Winchester, 150 grain copper impact. And I haven't cleaned the barrel. So we've got a freshly cleaned barrel shooting only the copper bullets, starting with uh, Lehigh Defense. And we did shoot one better group, much better group with that Lehigh Defense. So we're going to keep it fouled with this copper before we change to gilding metal jacketed lead core bullets for our more testing later. Let's just see what this does with the Winchester. Made a hole in the paper. How do you like that? Now, some people watching my videos have criticized me for my light grip on the rifle, and they say I'll shoot better with a, a tighter grip. I've just been lightly gripping it, and that's why my finger comes off and my hand often comes off. I let that rifle free recoil. But I'm gonna try to hang on tighter, see if I can shoot better groups. Those two look like they went in the same hole. <laughs> now, whether that's just the ammo or my new shooting technique, I don't know. But that first shot, I did not have it all that tight because it jumped out of my hand a bit too, but that looks like two bullets touching right there. I think I've got a sub MOA goop with that ammunition. That is pretty impressive. I'm gonna go uh, check my chronograph here, take down some data, and then we'll go to the next load. But that was pretty encouraging. Okay, average velocity on that was uh, 2686. The box is claiming about 2,800 feet per second, 2,810 at the muzzle, but I'll bet you that's off of a 24 inch barrel. And we have a 20 here. So let's try the Hornady now. This is that same CX bullet, but a heavier weight. And that might make a difference. 165 grain CX. Pretty 
putting that bullet about the same place as that last load went. Low and to the left. <clears throat> That's about a half inch so far. Can't quite tell where that bullet landed. It might be right in there and it might be a on the black line a little bit lower, but I'm seeing something a little disturbing now that I didn't see before from that previous group. I'm seeing a hole way down low unless there's a fly landed on it out there. We'll find it out when we go out there to check it. I'm gonna run my data here, take that down, then we'll go out and look at that target. Then I think we'll clean the barrel and switch over to some more traditional bullets, cup and core. Well, shoot. Those two Winchester coppers dropped right there, but the third one was way out. But that was the first shot, that high one. So that might have been cold barrel issue, but nah, I kind of doubt it. This rifle's been pretty much sticking right to the point. Now, this is that other Hornady load, and that's not bad. That's 1.2, 1 1.22 of an inch. Pretty good hunting load, but I expect better from this rifle. So I think we're going to switch over and I'm going to clean that barrel and we're going to start shooting some uh, cup and core bullets or more lead-based bullets of various kinds and see what they do. Okay, I have got this thing freshly cleaned. That barrel is so clean and shiny you could drink water out of it. <laughs> and I have got some uh, typical cup and core bullets here at a little more upgraded than that, but these are not all copper, so let's see if that makes a difference. We'll start off with some uh, Winchester 150 grain EPs, extreme point bullets, I believe they're calling this. And they're extremely tight inside of their container, that's for sure. You better give it a fouling shot before we start keeping track here, but we'll start after that. Chronograph is on, target is ready. Okay, what have we got for groups on that page? One down there, one there. Everything is consistently right, so I'll just make an adjustment left here, get a little closer to where I should be hitting. And we're consistently low, but we're changing bullet weights, 50s, 150s. Yeah, that's pretty low. A couple of inches low, so I think we can afford to go up a smidge here. All right, we should be an MOA up, MOA over to the left. So I think I can afford to go for the center bull again. Sure, I'm seeing a hole there. Let's see what we've got. I had probably better go out there and look. Well, I'm lazy today. Let's shoot a group and see what happens. Yeah, that was it, all right. Okay. Still shooting pretty low. Mm, that's right in there. Okay. I'm just going to count that even though it was from a clean barrel. And we're still shooting to the left. So let's give it four more, one more inch to the right. Now I've noticed when we go to heavier weight bullets, it's tending to shoot higher. So I'm not going to make any more adjustments for elevation here. But I'll take my data down on this Winchester load and uh, get back to you. 165 grain core lock tipped from Remington. See how that does. Then what I'm going to do is just go through the rest of my shooting here and not bother to tell you guys about it. We'll just put some text up explaining which bullets we're shooting and the groups we're getting. Well, things are shaping up here. This was that uh, last load with, uh, I think it was 180 grain core locks. 
Just a little bit of left right there. I was aiming uh, clear up there, so we had a lot of drop on this baby. But um, I got to say that with that little red dot inside of that scope, I am completely covering that aiming point. So I never know if I'm exactly left or right a little bit, and that could be part of my problem here. And then this load was the Winchester 150 grain. That's just under an inch. You got two holes there because one that circled was the uh, original from that other group that went wild like that. And here we have two more from the Remington uh, core locked lighter bullets. I think they were the 165s and one for some reason flew way high. So Need uh, what I would recommend to anybody doing this sort of thing, of course, is not just quit with three shots. Get see, like, what is this thing really capable of? Let's try a few more. Once you've picked the load you like or the bullet you like, and the one that shows some good potential, um, and we're showing some really good potential here, but a, a better scope, I think, or at least a higher power scope. That the scope is nice and bright, I like it, but it just doesn't seem to have the magnification and or a fine enough reticle that I can really keep it on target. Here we go. The Hornady load measured out at 0.768. So just over three quarter of an inch. That suggests that one has a lot of potential. Now the federal uh, terminal ascent I thought was grouping nicely right here on the paper, but turns out we've got two holes off the paper. And that opened it up to over two and a half inches. So I might just try that one again. That's kind of a different bullet with a solid copper base or shank. So it might need a little bit of seasoning in the barrel. So I might try that target or that one and see where that groups for another try. Hundred and eighty grain core lock tipped. Let's see what they do. Yeah, that's cool yet. Oop, I better take down my data. This is wild. They got a 6.5 Creedmoor stuck in this box of 308 Winchesters. Wow. There's an object lesson for you, folks. Always check your head stamps. That is amazing. Whoa. Let me look at the similarity between these two. 308's quite a bit longer to the shoulder, so it will fit. The bullet's a lot longer on the 6.5, and the 6.5 case might be a little less taper in it. It was a real tight fit, so I thought I'd better pull that thing out and see what's wrong. But man, yeah, we'll do something a little bit more on that. Never had that happen before. Wrong cartridge in box. Let's see what the rest of these say. 308, 
308, 308, 308. 308. 308 all the way across. Just that one slipped in. How that happens, I have no idea. Never had this box open before. Brand new. Somebody at the plant must have uh, made a switch or a swap. Couldn't have, I mean this could this stuff could happen at a store. You go in to buy some ammo and somebody must have been in there looking and pulling one out, looking at it, putting it back in the wrong box. That could have happened, but I didn't get this from a store. I ordered these direct. Wow. Something to watch for. 6.5 instead of a 308. Crazy. That's a nice little two-shot group. Nobody bases his success or failure on a two-shot group, but... Nice. Just a nice triangle there. That's a nice one. Can't record some data on that one. This will be Federal Terminal Ascent. Great bullet, 175 grains. Pretty good little group there, too. Record that data. Go check the groups and measure them. Here goes another try with the Federal Terminal Ascent. It's a good hunting bullet. I'd like to see it perform better than it did, and I think it might need a little bit of barrel following in its credit before it groups well, but let's just see. I might try to hold that forend down. See if that changes anything. The elevation is the same as the last group, and it is shooting to the left the same as the last group. So let's just keep after it here. I'm shifting over a little bit. The chronograph, I guess I'm all right. Those are nice and close. By golly, about an inch group. So it's looking like this lightweight rifle might want to be hugged a little more tightly. That's nice to know. After all that group shooting, I'm starting to get tighter groups. Now, it could also be that we're shooting enough to really break this thing in. A lot of barrel builders recommend breaking in a barrel, and that might be by a, a careful system, or it might simply be by shooting enough rounds through it. Pretty much standard wisdom is that a new rifle will start shooting better after, oh, anywhere from 50 to 100 rounds have been through it. And I don't have that many to this one yet, but eh, we must be getting close to 50. So any a number of those things could be happening. I think I'll try another shot with uh, another group with this load that did well. This was the 178 grain ELDX. I'll try holding that one down a little more tightly. See if that gives me another great group or even better one or worse one. Yeah, that's plenty cool yet. It's amazing how cool this barrel stays. Let's see, that was shooting just a little low, so I'll go for that upper dot. Right where it should be. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, looks like another three-quarter inch group. So uh, whether it's the new technique or the barrel being broken in, 
Either way, she's shooting sweet now. So I think that will pretty much conclude my test with this. I might try a couple more shots with some other loads, but I'm pretty satisfied that this rifle has got what it takes to be a good shooter. It would be really fun to work up some hand loads for it, but not my rifle, so I'm not going to burn up my powder and bullets getting a rifle to shoot beautifully when I'm going to send it back. Hey, thanks for uh, watching, guys. And I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into what it's like to be testing a rifle for a magazine review. You know, there's a, a lot of time and effort, but it pays off. And if you want to be doing this with your own rifles, of course, you need to understand how all the possible screw-ups you can do. It's really amazing. Um, but I would take some time to figure out whether your rifle likes to be held down a little more tightly like this one seems to. Or if you can shoot it the bench rest style the way I was doing earlier. And then, of course, you saw how many different loads that I went through to find ones that really worked well. But now, by golly, we've got a couple here that are they're working quite well. We had an earlier one, a Lehigh Defense all copper bullet that was shooting under an inch. So I think we've got a lot of potential. See you next time. Hunt honestly shoot straight. Mm -hmm.